In this video, we're going to apply first order perturbation theory to the particle in a slanted box. So in our particle in a box model, we had our total Hamiltonian would have just been the kinetic energy minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x. But in the particle in a slanted box, we have some potential energy which slopes up from the left to the right going from v equals 0 at x equals 0 up to v equals v naught at x equals l. So our, our perturbation operator, let me do that more clearly with the script v there, our perturbation operator is going to be this v naught x over l. So our reference system, which we can solve exactly, is the particle in a box, which is this h naught psi naught equals e naught psi naught. Our reference Hamiltonian is the particle in a box Hamiltonian, just the, just the kinetic energy. And that has a reference wave function, so the zeroth order wave function for, for a given quantum number, being square root of 2 over L, sine n pi x over L. And the zero order energies of these wave functions, which is just the energy of the reference system, the particle in a box energies, is h squared n squared over 8 ml squared. So we derived previously that the first order perturbation theory correction to the energy for this system, so correcting for the fact that our Hamiltonian is not this reference system, it's this perturbed system, it's perturbed away from whatever the reference system was. The first order correction to the energy, this E1 at a given quantum number n, is going to be this integral here, this n star vn, or integral over the entire space of the wave function of psi naught star n v, the perturbation operator, acting on psi naught n. Okay, so let's look at this for the ground state of the particle in a slanted box. So our psi naught 1 is just going to be square root of 2 over L sine and n is 1, so we have sine pi x over L. So that's our reference wave function for this case. And our zero order energy our reference energy for this n equals 1 state is just going to be h squared over 8 ml squared again n equals 1. Okay so now let's go about calculating what the first order correction to this ground state this n equals 1 energy is going to be. Okay so that's going to be the integral the entire space of our wave function is going from 0 to L and it's just in the dimension x, so we just have dx. Our complex conjugate of our wave function is square root of 2 over L sine pi x over L. Our perturbation operator is v naught x over L. That's our v, our script v, as, as opposed to the potential energy operator, which would just be a Roman v. And then our wave function again, since this is real, is, same, is the same as the complex conjugate, square root of 2 over L sine pi x over L. Okay, so we can rewrite this integral in a more convenient form. We can factor out this factor of square root of 2 over L, square root of 2 over L. That combines to give us a 2 over L. Then we also have a v naught and L, which are constants here. So I can pull out that v naught as well and make that L squared. Okay, that's all good. Then I still have integral from 0 to L. I have this x, which is going to be left in there. I have sine pi x over L times sine pi x over L. So it's going to give me sine squared pi x over L and this is integrated with respect to x. Okay, so I've done this integral in previous videos and just to skip to what the result is, if you look up in tables uh, a similar integral, the integral of say x sine squared kx, you'll be able to reproduce this formula. So we still have our constants out in front of there, the 2 v naught over L squared and then the value that this integral evaluates to it's going to be L squared over 4 if you fully evaluate that integral. So this L squared cancels with that L squared, numerator and denominator. 
this 2 cancels out with this 4 down here, and you're left with a 2. So what we're left with down here is v naught over 2. So our first order correction to the ground our first order correction to the ground state energy of the particle in a slanted box is just going to be half the total width of this of this perturbation here. So that's our v naught over 2. So we're just displacing our ground state wave function up by v naught over 2 energy units. That's how much our wave function is perturbed up in the first order. So then <clears throat> putting, to, putting that together with the zero order energy, we have that our total energy is going to equal the zero order energy, h squared over 8 ml squared, the particle in a box energy, plus this first order correction, v naught over 2. And then if we did second order perturbation theory, we would get a second order correction to this energy, third order, fourth order, etc. And higher orders energies are going to deter are going to depend on higher powers of this v naught. So if I did the second order energy, that would that would give me something which ends up being quadratic in v naught, and then third order would be cubic, etc. So if v naught is small, then these higher order contributions become vanishingly small because if you take something small and square it, it becomes even much smaller. So for very small perturbations in this value of v naught, this is a very good approximation to what this ground state energy in the particle in a slanted box is going to be. As this gets larger and larger, we perturb further and further away from this reference system in the particle in a box and then these higher order perturbation terms are going to matter to get us an accurate ground state energy. So that, as we said, this is an approximation, and as long as this perturbation away from the reference system is mild, as long as the reference system is a good first approximation to the full system with its full Hamiltonian, then we'll get reasonable answers by doing relatively low orders of perturbation theory.